Okay, thanks, Rebecca. Hi, everyone, and thanks very much for having me here today. Um, I'm going to talk about a campaign that I co-founded, which laid, uh, relied heavily upon FOI responses, which we gained through the What Do They Know website, which is part of my society. So before I kind of go into exactly how we used FOI, I need to give a little bit of background to the campaign. Um, first of all, I should let you know I'm speaking as a parent today who co-founded this campaign three years ago. Um, and we were campaigning for a further year of nursery funding in Scotland for all children who were deferring their primary one start. Um, to start, like many campaigns, um, our campaign started because of personal experience. Um, there was a group of parents across the country who were realising that their children were not ready to start school at the sort of designated age or the expected age in Scotland, which is usually between about four and a half and five and a half. And uh, myself, along with some other parents, managed to inform ourselves through the web, uh, internet um, that we actually had a legal right to defer our children, even if they were over five and a half, as long as they had not turned age six by the school starting date. Um, so very quickly, then this is the law in Scotland, which had actually been in force since 1980 and the highlighted section explains that any child who's not five by the school start date, which is inevitably in August, but very slightly by each of the 32 local authority areas in Scotland, then they don't have to start school until the following August. So as an example, just to kind of explain that further, if your child's date of birth is the 15th of August 2017, then in 2022 next year, um, if the school start date in that council was 14th of August, then they wouldn't have to go to school until the following year, even if it was a day before or a day after they turned six. But this is little known in Scotland. Most people know that if your child is born in January and February, that you have a legal right to defer and you will receive the, the all prize nursery funding for a further year when um, the mid-August to December born cohort who are still four at the school start date didn't it wasn't very widely known a research um survey we did nationally um in 2018 which had nearly 700 parents in every single local authority area responding showed that only 16 percent of parents knew that in august you could defer a child um so we started to you know get quite anxious about the fact that it was very difficult for us to find this information um and then once we found it we realized that actually even though we have a legal right to defer our children who we think we, we don't want them to start school until they're older that was a relief great but we don't have an automatic entitlement to continued nursery funding and for many families that is absolutely essential to enable them to for this, the, both parents to work or to, to, to meet around family life. And in Scotland, you have a 99% uptake rate in the mo at the moment for age three to five year olds in nursery places. So what inevitably this meant was that the, there was a discrepancy between the actual legal right to defer a child who hadn't turned five by the school start date and the entitlement to automatic continued nursery funding. Um, and really that was down to individual councils, whether they would grant that or not. No parent has ever said to us, yeah, I don't mind if they grant it or not, because obviously there's a lot of money involved in that, um, the, the, the expense to the parent. Another issue was that if the council refused it, that they could, um, they could oust your child from that council run nursery so that you would have to then move them to another nursery, a private one, all the unsettling of that for the child and the family and then the additional cost because private nursery was much more expensive than council nursery so there's a lot of issues here and um, so we established that there was these discrepancies from anecdotal evidence given by parents but then we really wanted to to prove it and that's where FOI came in initially we sent FOIs to the 32 local authorities um, by private email and my goodness it was hard we are all lay people some people had um, processed FOIs through their work, but suddenly in our free time, when you've got young children and a job and everything else to juggle, you have 32 FOIs to process and process the jargon that came with them. And then, um, you know, sort them all in your email inbox and, you know, just all the, the additional time requirements of that. Um, and then for me, one thing that I hadn't expected, but which became pretty scary, actually, I'm not a journalist, I'm not trained in data processing. Um, one of the things that I found very hard was knowing what I could share and what I couldn't share. So, for example, and this was the, the, the tale of a, an email signature that I got from a local authority. And in number one, it says, this is sent in confidence for the addressee only. It may contain legally privileged information. And I'm sorry, that word legally just sets off alarm bells for me. 
data protection, GDPR. I thought the freedom of information when it was free, I thought the onus was on them to decide what to share. And suddenly me as a private citizen with no training suddenly had to have this um, uber sense of what I could share or not. Would I be liable if um, I shared information that was sensitive or official? Some of these emails were labeled with those terms and it became this, you know, I was going in this, you know, vortex of going around my head and analyzing it. What could I do and what could I not do? And it actually, you know, if I hadn't found the What Do They Know website, it would have been prohibitive to what we actually managed to achieve in the campaign in the end and you know actually getting that information out there so here's some of the information that we found sending through the what do they know website was brilliant because it took the pressure off any individuals to decide can i share this or not because everything's public everything's got a web link the, the authorities that respond know that it's going into the public domain and therefore the onus is on them as it should be to be transparent to provide what they can provide or not. So you can see here that we established across all the 32 local authority councils in Scotland the rate of approving these requests for funding over the last three years. We've used a sort of traffic light system without the amber to identify different local authorities and their rates of approving these or not. And you can see that there's discrepancies there. Why we've gone up from 13 councils approving all requests in 2018-19 to 19 now. Um, you know, if you live in one of those unfortunate authorities that doesn't, you know, have the, the automatic funding policy, then it's a very difficult time for you as a parent to decide whether to move your child nursery. Can you afford it? But in good news, um, we got we lobbied using the information that we we established from the What Do They Know website or FOIs, and we successfully lobbied for the law to be changed. So in Scotland, from August two thousand and twenty three, any child taking up that nineteen eighty. 43 year old um, right to defer their school start will automatically be guaranteed a further year of nursery funding by ticking a box and that is just such peace of mind for us as campaigners to know that other parents won't have to go through what many parents have suffered and experienced over the last few years and to have to potentially make a, a decision about their child's best interests in, con in conflict with what they can afford. Thank you, what do they know in my society? Three seconds to go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Patricia. That was a that's a really lovely illustration uh, of using FOI to to achieve a specific goal. Um, and yeah, again, lovely to to know that there are there are great successes in the world. 